wish there was a bigger pool. Tiny Town VR. If you've never heard of it, it is a city sandbox building game, but with a twist. You design the world from scratch, and you start with nothing. Just an empty nothingness in the void, and you fill it with cities, war zones, and forests. The best way to describe it would be the Steam description, so I'll let it explain it for you. Tiny Town VR is a casual world building game in virtual reality, which was inspired by the nostalgic storytelling power of LEGO and action figures, mixed with the excitement of making something original. Build your world, big or small, and then fill it with thousands of different objects. Add characters whose joints can be pushed, pulled, and twisted into any pose imaginable. Then give them a voice with custom speech bubbles. Once the scene is set, capture your story using the in-game camera, add captions, then save it or share it with your friends. Direct to Facebook, make something funny, make something powerful, make something your own. Now that sounds awesome, right? Well, yeah. Before we start, I'll explain some more of the positive points about the game. Tiny Town VR is the only game of its type I have ever seen on Steam. The uniqueness of it allows for a bit of a void in the market of the genre. The city builder aspect of it is unique. Most city builders incorporate a sort of economy system to allow for more replayability. But instead of allowing the user to use their imagination, if you've ever played games like City Skyline or Prison Architect, they all seem to incorporate a form of economic system. However, Tiny Town's lack of that allows the player to create anything in their imagination, whilst also giving them some of the tools that they need from the very beginning. Tools like the player in-game rotation and object rotation. Whilst not being the most intuitive or easy to use, it was added to simply allow the player to do what they needed to do. The thing about the game is it seems to have been designed to be bare bones basic, seemingly targeted towards a younger demo demographic who may be interested in game development with VR equipment. Furthermore, the simplistic style of the game is somewhat charming, working well with the rest of the game to allow for a somewhat easy to use UI system. It is designed like this in such a way due to it being part of a niche genre. A large number of props in the game does help, but it also makes the problem a whole lot worse. Often when I'm playing and designing a city, I do get overwhelmed, because of the lack of original assets which are included in the game, or whether it is just because there is too many assets that do the same thing, making them redundant to use in the first place. Since the game's release, there has only been a total of six fully fleshed out game updates, which may or may not surprise you, but the last update came out in 2018. After that point, nothing has been heard from the developer. It's just been radio silence. Within the game itself, there is somewhere up to about 600 assets, which seems like a lot, right? But this number is largely down to the asset packs that they had bought from Cinti Studios. This is where the issue comes in. If you go onto the Stu Cinti Studios website, and go to the Simple Series tab, you'll see a lot of the assets that they use, if not all of them. The more I've played and learned about game development, the more it feels like the developer has developed this game to be an asset flip. Throw a load of shop-bought assets together in a game, and then leave the project, taking any money that they want with them. Which, just to clarify, isn't disrespect in Cinti Studios. They do amazing works and the assets that they make I use in my game as well. The use of exclusively only shop-bought assets causes other issues, namely that the game is frequently mistaken for a game called SSB2. This lack of uniqueness within its assets makes it extremely boring and bland. There are a huge amount of issues with the game. Some of the main issues would be the lack of user-friendliness, the movement system as a whole is an issue. The use of dragging yourself around the map causes some of the more casual players to not want to play. Other issues like save functionality and the lack of auto-saving during builds also lead to other problems, such as when the game crashes, all progress and work is lost. Frequent issues with save renders, entire saves deleting themselves, etc. 
probably one of the biggest issues that people have with the game is the processing workshop bug. The screen, it comes up as a black screen, but in the headset, it says that you are processing workshop items. There is no known fix for it, and it seems to be one of the leading causes for the player base to continue to shrink on a monthly basis. Attempts from users like myself and bigger YouTubers to keep the community alive until the developer have returned have all kind of been voided by this one bug. I had to delete all the files from my PC, uninstall, reinstall, and verify my game files. I attempted to boot it up about 20 times before it finally wanted to work when it happened to me. It is sad to say, but I believe that Tiny Town VR has been abandoned. And as much as I do have a sliver of hope for the return of a game developer, it's likely they'll never return to the game, which is a huge shame. Games like Tiny Town are unheard of and rarely spoken about, but it was a good way of getting creativity put back into gaming. And it certainly allowed for more creative approaches to how myself and other members of the community have approached doing things. If I were to be honest, I'd say that Tiny Town is a great game. It has got huge potential, but just the lack of updates, fresh content, bug fixes, has left a lot to des be desired within regards of the game. The community that Tiny Town itself has created has been awesome. The creativity that has been allowed shared from users like Gibson Dude with the creation of Gibsonville, as well as his other assets, which I will put down in the description below and the rest of the community who have made amazing things to try and keep this game interesting. It just seems sad to close such a large chapter on my channel that I've created content on for so long. I will be making Tiny Town content just less regularly. The enjoyment and satisfaction I get from the game are nowhere near what I used to get when I first started playing over a year and a half ago. Which is sad, but I guess in a way it's a good thing. It allows me to finally have the freedom to play, do, create what I want on my channel. But anyway, that wraps everything up. I know it wasn't a silly or a really long video and it wasn't a Tiny Town creation video, but I wanted to do something different. So thank you all so much for watching and I shall see you all in the next video.